Well, thank you both for having me on. Uh, my name is Anis Bailey. I am a social worker, change agent, a consultant. I'm a writer, and I myself as a, a parent of two boys, ages four and one year old. So I was mainly um, working with the middle age. And in the middle age, what is the biggest challenges you saw in working with those kids? Um, first, I want to say that those youth made me fall in love with foster care and child welfare. They are some of the most inspiring and amazing people I have ever met. And, but the challenge was, from my perspective... Your face your face just lit up the way Guy's <laughs> face lights up when he talks about these kids. Go ahead. My challenge was mainly at the organizational level. I, I think the system is trying I, I don't want to knock down all the good initiatives that are happening. So one of my frustration was I had to go to court with these youth at the RTC and I would go to court in the Bronx, wait three hours and only for the case to be dismissed for another three months. And so this young person is now lingering in foster care for an additional three months just because an attorney didn't show up or someone wasn't notified appropriately. And it's just, and that young person's there, hope you could see that everything changes. Let me, and let me preempt this by saying, the perception, I believe, sometimes is, is that these are bad kids and their parents didn't know what to do with them, or they ran away or whatever else it is, and that's why they're here, that they're bad kids. And that's wrong. If a child or a youth ends up in foster care, it means every single other means of support has failed them. Every single other support system has failed them. This is the last resort. Once a kid is on our roster or in our, you know, in our intake or whatever it is on our caseload, this is it. Their caregiver, it didn't work out, their next of kin, they probably have had a dozen caseworkers and you're, you're another person that they have to open up to. And a lot of them, most of them, they do try. And to me, that's resiliency. Sure. How many kids are being adopted after, let's just say 13? How often from a percentage uh, rate are kids adopted after 13? I may have seen it in the past nine years, maybe three, four times. I, I know the little people get adopted. I call I call my, my kids little people too. Um, it's yeah. usually the babies um, and under 10, you know, um, after 10, the you know, it just gets harder and harder. You said a forever family, what is that? A family who's not gonna kick you out once those checks stop coming in. In my role, in my last role within an agency, I was getting the phone calls where um, hi, my name is so and so. I, you know, I was adopted as as a ten year old through your agency, but I'm 22 now, and at 21, my adopted family kicked me out, and now has another kid. I'm sorry, you know? what the fuck are you talking about, please? Because the 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 check stop coming once the youth is 21, the federal monies no longer pay that adopted family. You know, they just turned 22 and it's a broken adoption because it's 20, they're 21, there's no more checks and that family who was supposed to be forever just said, okay, thank you, just farewell, get, get the heck out of my house. And now that, foster, that adoptive parent now goes back to an agency and says, oh, my home is open, I want to um, accept more kids, right? And the cycle continues. It's and a that, fucking, it's a business is what you're telling hustle. me? It's a hustle? Of course. Of course. You don't get the Guy Bryant's all the time. And that's what his push is for. And that's what our push is. It's just we need, we need people who want to be foster parents for the right reasons. Not because this is an additional funding source for their bills, right? And as much as agencies do their best to vet these um, foster parents, at, at the end of the day, you just don't have enough to choose from. And so the quality is a hit or miss. And again, that's my experience. There are some, I've met some amazing foster parents who 
it's like if I could just replicate you and just clone you a hundred times, we would have better outcomes. Fucking people, man. Fucking people, like. Is there no bottom? You know is what? there is there literally no fucking basement? 